On today's video, I'm going to show you how to put in a real pinball machine's tilt mechanical assembly so that this thing feels more realistic like a real pinball machine and you don't have to worry about your digital tilt settings. So let's go. Now I've got this virtual pinball digital nudge and tilt set up actually pretty nice. It plays really good, um, so somewhat accurate. However, there are times when your surround sound feedback is going to kick in and on special tables that like to have really aggressive pop bumpers or some shaking and sound effects that can trigger your tilts. And um, so that's one problem. The other problem is if you decide to crank up the tilt settings so that you are not having it kick out on you all the time, then you're literally shaking the cabinet on some games and it doesn't actually change and cause a tilt. So today's video, we're gonna be installing a real pinball tilt mechanism that has been graciously sponsored from Marco Specialties. So thank you very much for that. And um, we're gonna get all of those problems fixed and have this thing tilting just like a real pinball machine. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this tilt mechanism assembly is from Marco Specialties and the part number is right up there for you and I'll also put it in the video description below so you can order yourself one of these. Okay, now when you're placing this tilt bob mechanism, uh, you're gonna want it on the front side of the cab. I wouldn't go anything further than, you know, six or eight inches back from the front of the cab. Otherwise, you're gonna get diminishing effects on how this is actually sensing your shaking of the cabinet. Uh, some other things to think about, obviously don't put it too close to other things like flippers or we are going to have a exciter for our SSF system somewhere around here and it has to be under this level. So we have to watch that we don't interfere with that. So figure out where you want this thing and I would hang the hook part first, the top part, and just simply use a pencil and mark where you're gonna wanna put it. Okay, now for this bottom bracket, it has a slot in here, so you can actually go left and right quite a bit to adjust it so that this is centered when you have it mounted. Uh, so it's just a matter of where do the up and down position do we want this. So what I would recommend is you take this plumb bob uh, with the thumb screw and set it to the very, very longest that this could possibly be, and then put it through in here. And when you're going to mount it, I would mount it so that the bracket is just off the end of this graphite piece, maybe you know an eighth of an inch or something like that. And th that way in a swing, it could hit like there without hitting the plumb bob. And then that gives you a full all the way down adjustability and then you can always adjust it up to get it more sensitive. Okay, then put your plumb bob in, put it in through the bottom, go ahead and put it on the top bracket, and then go ahead and screw in the bottom bracket. And I would put in two screws, that way if you just put in the one, there's the odd chance that this thing might start tilting on you on the bottom bracket. But if you got two in there, that won't happen. Just make sure you put them inside enough inside the slot that there's still some adjustability. And just before you snug this right down, you're gonna wanna check if it's centered. So let the plumb bob hang without any shaking and movement and just make sure it's centered. And if it's not, just move your bracket. Try to get it as accurately as possible. That looks pretty good to me. And then snug down your screws. Okay, check it's tight. And then like I said, let that plumb bob settle to where it needs to be. And that looks perfectly right in the center. Now, there is a slight little issue with this bracket holding the plumb bob a little too close this way. So it's not centered this way, but that's an easy fix. This is a pretty flexible bracket. You can just bend it down or bend it out to get it so that when it hangs, it's right exactly in the center. So in my case, I just gotta pull the tab out a touch. Okay, and for me, that's right in the center now. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and wire this up. 
Now on the top and the bottom bracket are these little kind of bent angle spade connectors so that you can put a little female spade connector on it. And this is for you to hook your wires up to your controller board. So depending whether you have a KL25Z or a pin one, or in this case we have a dude's cab, you just have to make sure that those connections are gonna go to whatever button that you're gonna specify for tilt. Now because we have a dude's cab and a button board, we've already thought ahead. We already have the button board ready for our tilt. So the green is gonna go to the bottom, which is my ground and the blue is going to be the top for the actual tilt. Now the connections on these brackets don't actually matter. It's a simple touch connection so when these connect it will sense a tilt so it doesn't matter which one you put it on. I'm more just keeping it uh, ground for the bottom base for me. All right, now that this is all installed, I can quickly tell you how it works. So right now, this circuit is not completed because of the air gap. And as you start playing pinball and start nudging, you're gonna have that plumb bob moving around. And if you give it too hard of a hit, you can see that the plumb bob will eventually touch the bottom bracket. And when it does that, it completes the circuit and sends an input signal to your controller board, which detects that as a tilt. And so if you find that this is just never tilting for you, it might be because that plumb bob is way down too far. So if that's the case, undo the thumb screw and position that plumb bob graphite part up a little higher so that it will have less gap here and be easier to tilt. So now that this is all hooked up, let's go ahead and fix things up on the digital side of this so they can get this working. All right, before changing anything on VPX, I just wanted to see if this actually triggers automatically because of the dude's cab. And so if I reach in here and just push it over, I can see if it gets a tilt. Hey, watch those hands, buster. And that's working properly. Awesome. And then really quickly, if I hold that plumb bob in the middle and make sure it doesn't touch and aggressively smack the cabinet around, I can see if my digital tilt is still operational and then I'll know I'll have to turn that off. So I'm just gonna stop this from touching. Smack the cabinet. You're no gentleman. And yes, I am getting a tilt. So we're gonna have to turn off the digital tilt settings in VPX. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is open up your Visual Pinball X. And then once it opens up, you can take a look at your preferences. Go to Nudge. Configure keys. Okay, and if you look at here, we've got our mechanical tilt. Uh, otherwise, the keyboard is T. Uh, we've got it set for a dude's cab for button 12, so this is correct as well, and we can check that when we go into the configurator. And if you are wanting to turn your digital tilt sensitivity off, all you gotta go do down here is click that off, and then uh, VPX will not detect that anymore. Now, this is not necessarily the only thing you're gonna have to do because based off of your individual controllers, you're gonna to have to go in and see if there's anything in there that is detecting tilt sensitivity for you. So for example, I've got a dude's cab, so we gotta open up the dude's cab configurator. So we're gonna okay this. Okay, let's open up the dude's cab configurator. Dude. Okay, now if you don't know anything about the dude's cab configurator, I have a great video that I made previous to this. I'll post a link above so you can figure out how to set this all up for yourself. Um, so we have it already set up, so we just have to connect to it. And then uh, we're going to go to accelerometer. Now, right here, your tilt range, I had this previously set somewhere around here, and that kind of allows you to have less or more tilt sensitivity. If you do not want to have a digital tilt, just crank this all the way to zero, and that's all you have to do. Now, while we're in here, make sure that your tilt button is set for tilt. And if we go to look at our inputs, which we've already set before, and we scroll down here, we have tilt, and it's set as button 12. Now, I've already pre-tested this. Um, Dude's cab is, is outputting a tilt, and it is getting detected properly in VPX. Okay, we're all done, so we're gonna save this, so click on send config, and click on save to memory to save everything properly, and then you can go ahead and close this. All right, now that we have our tilt mechanism working properly, we have another issue. So even though I haven't jostled the cabinet, if I lean inside and touch the tilt mechanism over and trigger a tilt, you'll notice that this ball senses it's got some force applied to it and it moves up. Well, we don't want that to happen. We already have the accelerometer moving the ball realistically, so we don't want to have that added, so let me show you how to fix that. Okay, to get rid of the fake added nudge to the ball when you tilt, uh, this is what you got to do. We're going to go to uh, this PC, 
C drive, V pinball, visual pinball, and then you're gonna go down to scripts, and then you're gonna scroll down until you find these guys here. And this is the one that you want that's straight from MGR Net. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, this is the one you want, but we just, all we have to do to get this to work is you're going to right click, rename it, and then you're going to get rid of the end here. So it just says nudge plugin, and that's it. That's all you literally have to do. So now let's open up uh, Visual Pinball and check that that works. All right, now to test that this works how we like it, I'm not going to shake the cabinet and I'm just gonna reach in and move that tilt bob mechanism to trigger a tilt. And if you notice the ball in the trough there, it's not going to move. So there's my tilt. And it did not nudge at all. So, perfect. Yet, if I nudge the cabinet now, you can see it. I got nudging. Sweet. It's time to play some pinball. All right, now for getting your tilt working in future pinball, you're going to go to your C drive, V pinball, go to your future pinball folder, and you're gonna scroll down to where it says scripts, and then we're gonna open this, this pin event V2 settings. So double left click on that, and then you're gonna scroll down until you see something about tilt bob. Now, I've already changed this so I can make sure it works for you guys. This did say false, so all you gotta do is erase the false and put true in here, and uh, that'll work. Now, this 20 represents a, a number um, for the keyboard code for the letter T. So that's why this works with our setup for VPX as well. So just change this to true, make sure you file save it on the way out, and then um, that'll be good to go. Okay, now when you go to inputs, in order to make it work for Visual Pinball and Future Pinball, we're gonna have to come down here and change our tilt to instead of button 12, which does work with Visual Pinball, but it does not work with Future Pinball because it's expecting a letter T. So we're gonna change this to, just keep scrolling down, and you can put button keyboard presses. We're gonna change this to keyboard letter T. and. Um, this works in Visual Pinball and Future Pinball. Make sure you save it uh, by sending config and save to memory. Okay, here we go. Reaching in for the tilt mechanism. There's your warning. Second warning. Tilt. Sweet. All right, there's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to install a real pinball tilt mechanism into your virtual pinball cabinet. Special thanks to Marco Specialties for supplying that tilt bulb. And if you guys are in need of real pinball parts for your virtual pinball cabinet, I highly recommend you go check out what they have at Marco Specialties. Uh, what's up next? Man, I'm getting bored of having a fully functioning playing cabinet with no sound. Man, sound and music is really important to pinball. So I think the next video up should be putting in our speakers and putting in our SSF system. How cool is that gonna be? Uh, if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram, that way you can see what's going on in this cool shop in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.